Peace be with you. Welcome to the Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already. I got a former Methodist minister and somebody also who is on the ground hearing a lot about the first-hand accounts of a lot of the Islamophobic rhetoric that's happening and the harm that's coming to the communities in Texas. He has a great story for us to share here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Peace be with you. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So, Hua? Ura. Ura. Ura, Marine Corps. Ura. Hua is what? Army. Army. What's yes. different? Hua, Ura. Sounds like Hua. Eh, it's the same, but the Marines are better than the Army. Always have been. Yeah, so you were a former Marine? Former Marine, yes. Yeah. And now some of the things you sold out, man. You became a Muslim. You wanted them. No, nah, bro. I, I've been called a traitor. Yeah. I, I had a, when I was a, a new Muslim, I had a friend of mine that I, I used to talk to, and he actually called me a traitor after became a Muslim. Now, how the heck? I was gonna say, well, how the hell? How the hell? How yeah. the heck call you a traitor? Traitor to what? What? Cause, because if somebody drives Honda, is he a traitor to the U.S. or Toyota? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's a better car, right? right? You, see, you understand this, yeah. but most people don't. Uh -huh. He thought that it made me one of those, you know, Al Qaeda, you know, bad guys by becoming a Muslim. He didn't. He didn't understand what Islam means, and that those people are not true Muslims, even though they call themselves Muslims. All right, but let's hold up. You know, there there are. In the news, you know, people who maybe had Brani with a Muslim, maybe he's Muslim, not whatever the case, and uh, and you have some Muslims who who have some extreme ideas. Uh, what do you got to say about that? You know, part of Islam is moderation, and our brothers who are brothers in Islam, it's up to us. It's our duty as I hate this term, moderate Muslims. Either you're a Muslim or you're not. You know, yeah. if you're not inherent, th then you're not. But it's our it's our duty to take the guys who have aberrant views. And bring them back into the fold of Islam. We don't reject them just out of ignorance or unkindness, but it's all up to all Muslims to get those people who might be a little educate out there them. on the fringes and educate them, educate and make them, them better Muslims. They, yeah. So yeah. Our, our 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 thing is to to help uh, everybody be on that moderate course, but we're not modified Muslims. Exactly. <laughs> right. Totally agree. So Islam condemns all acts of violence, definitely. And you now actually got to see this coming from a background first, before you even got to see this, of a Methodist, your father was a pastor? Yeah, my father was a Baptist also, pastor, and I was a, a Methodist minister wow, at one point man, in my life. Wow, that's amazing. What, what, how, uh, tell us about that. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, young brother grew up in the church. Mother was very active in the church. And, you know, I, I felt that calling, you know, from God one day. You know, went down, got baptized and stuff, and I had that gift that God had given me to speak to people. And so I started, uh, Learning, I went to, a, we call it training school in the Methodist Church, you know, to a college, learned how to be a pastor, a khatib, like we do in our religion, and, and you know, started standing in front of the congregation, and, you know, giving the word to people. Jesus. Living that life. Yeah. Jesus saves. Jesus saves, exactly. That's what, that was the motto now? That's I mean, we love, I mean, when I say that, I mean, look, every messenger that the Creator sent, including Jesus, he was sent to save people from the hellfire. Correct. We love Yisraeli Salam. Yeah. Now you said so, Esau. I mean, this, he never. I mean, obviously spoke English. English language didn't exist, so he wouldn't even heard, know the term uh, uh, Jesus. Correct. So in, in Aramaic or in a Semitic language, it would be Esau. All right. So we, the same Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Uh, tell us. So you were, but but there's a difference between the save from the Islamic perspective and the yes from the. Uh, uh, explain that to our audience. In Christianity, they believe that if you believe in uh, the Savior Jesus that you're washed in his blood, uh, and if you believe in him, all your sins are forgiven. It's the theory of uh, intercession, that there's someone between you and God that can, by his deeds, wash away all your sins. Mm -hmm. And so by believing in Jesus and living as Jesus would, at that point, you have uh, the ability to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, were you telling people, look, if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to go to hellfire? You know, in the Methodist Church, we, that's one thing we don't really say, but it's, it's an unspoken thing. You know, they tell you the right way, and they say the other way is the wrong way, and you know what the consequences are. Mm -hmm. So it's not so blatant as, you know, you know, some people say, hey, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to burn. Yeah. Not, not that blatant. Not but that the, hardcore, but the, huh? They want the people to know. They, yeah. they, they know that you believe in Jesus. You know, Jesus is the way, the light, the truth, you know, those sort of thing, and the opposite is hell. Yes. Uh, now, how, you, your family also, your dad, your father was probably, you know, uh, very uh, elated to see you come in 
in following his footsteps because he was uh, a minister before you? Yeah, he, we, I come from a family of ministers. A uncles, family, your whole family. Is uncle. I, I have uncles, several that were very well known on the Baptist side of a uh, of ministry. Then my father, you know. Were you related to T D Jakes? No, not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> you know T D Jakes? Yeah, I know who the Bishop T D Jakes is. Yeah. Yes, he's real big in that part of the country. Yeah, were you like uh, preaching with him? <laughs> no, no, no. Just you know some the the. Uh, path I was from in the Christian church is called Christian Methodist Episcopal. Yeah, it's related to the old AME African Methodist Episcopal uh -huh. Church. They just changed the African to yeah. Christian as they got more modernized, and it's a very moderate brand of Christianity. If you want to say anything, it's not very. It's not like you know the Baptist, you know, hellfire and damnation that sort of thing. But it's not very liberal either. It's kind of that, that, that middle middle ground. So. All right, we're going to take a break, and we got a lot more to talk about. Very interesting uh, individual with an interesting story. Don't go anywhere. We have a lot more to talk about here in the Dean Show. We'll be right back. If you haven't, subscribe right now. Welcome back to the Dean Show, and very interesting story. So your whole family are preachers. Yeah, uncles, a couple of cousins, you know, Min ministers. ministers and farmers are what we were. Ministers and what? Farmers. A what? Farmers. Farmers? Yep, raising cattle, you know, growing stuff. That's it's like a good old boy now. I yeah, mean, small town, East Texas. Yeah. So. I, I mean, uh, usually you think of some of these rural areas, and you got like KKK out there, and uh, you know. That's an interesting story about that. My mother was the first black teacher in all white school districts. Yeah. Yeah. She has her own whole story. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah, it was. It was the kind of place. I don't know if you know Texas at all. Uh, the town next to us, the biggest town, was called Greenville, Texas, and they were famous for a long time having a sign on the highway that said, the uh, blackest land, the whitest people. So that mm -hmm. was kind of the, I mean, even when I was a little kid, we still had the colored and white water fountains. You know, black people went in the back door, white mm -hmm. people in the front door, that sort yeah. of thing. So, We're going to get to that. Uh, before we um, get to that, tell us, I mean, father, uncles, uh, ministers, preachers, <laughs> How do you, what were you going to say? No, I grew up in the church and I had, you know, like any child that grows up in a church, you have a certain view of how it's supposed to be. And, you know, it's a very pure and innocent form of it. But like anything that man's involved in, sometimes there's politics and things. And that's what really drove me away from the church were the political things, the purely non-religious things of the goings on that behind the behind the doors kind of thing that kind of soured my you know my intentions on, on Christianity. So how did you become a Muslim? Wow, okay. So many years later I am have lost my relationship with the church completely. I'm not going to church, not doing anything. I had a Muslim I always had Muslim friends. And we'd sit down and talk about what we believed. I always had an issue with the whole divinity of Christ, the whole Trinity thing because I'd been to, to school and you sit there and you go, okay, so I know about the Council of Nicaea, the Council of Council and these things and how they were all inventions. And so uh, I'm looking for something. You know, I had a friend of mine I had reconnected with and he said, you know, brother, he said, you're, you're a good guy. He said, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna give you a book. And he just gave me one of those basic beginner Islam books. But with my background being military and Christian, I was really afraid of making that leap. So for about a year I studied. Alhamdulillah, uh, I moved, I found, I ran to a brother who went to the uh, Islamic Center of Irving. He invited me to come to the Open Hearts, Open Doors one Saturday. And so I went, a little skeptical, you know, just wanted to learn. But I needed to talk to somebody. And uh, so I did that, and I actually ended up taking the uh, new Muslim class, even though I wasn't a Muslim yet, which uh, kind of led me you down. So you, were, you weren't a Muslim and you were taking uh, this class? But, so I, want, I, I needed to learn exactly those little things you don't know as a, a Muslim. You know, about Tawheed and those sort of things yeah, so and what's you, required. So your mind is open like a parasite. My mind is open, yes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And so I, I take the class. Uh, I met a wonderful uh, sheikh at the uh, ICI, uh, Sheikh Isa, a Rwandan sheikh that was visiting there. And we would just sit and talk. Nobody ever tried to uh, sell me on Islam. It was just a discussion about what you believe. And you talk and people say, well, that's what we believe. And so there was that common ground. So... Uh, after about a year of studying, I made up my mind I want to take my shahada. Now this is a funny story. So I, go, I call uh, the nearest masha to me, make an appointment, and they say the amount's not available. So I said, okay, I'll wait another day. So I make another appointment with the Imam Zia from Irving, and he had a janazah, so I couldn't take my shahada that day. So 
So I said, you know, I had been watching uh, this guy, don't know who he is, but he's a good speaker, Noman Ali Khan, on YouTube. And not knowing that he's very well known in the community because I don't know the community. So I uh, call up Bayani, uh Institute and talk to the uh, Sister Nita Kaja there and said, hey, I'm not a Muslim, I'm trying to take my Shahada. I can't find anybody to give you my Shahada. Can I come up there and, and see the brother and take my Shahada with him? So she makes an appointment. This is on a Wednesday. I go up that Friday, I talk to the brother for about an hour. We discuss things about why I want to become a Muslim, what I'm doing, and I took my Shahada uh, four years ago, April 19th, with Brother Noman Ali Khan. Wow, that, that reminds me of a quotation from the Bible attributed to Jesus where he said, uh, this is life eternal, that they may, you, may know you, the only true God, and Jesus who you have sent. Shahada saying that I bear witness that there's nothing worthy of worship except the only true God and Muhammad who you have sent as the final messenger, including Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and all the preceding messengers who brought the same message, worship the Creator, not the creation. That's the Shahada you're talking about. That's the Shahada I'm talking about. Yeah, and you took that and that's how you become a Muslim. That's how I become a Muslim. And uh, I've been active uh, with the community ever since. There in, uh, in Dallas, Fort Worth, I'm kind of a, a masha gypsy. I, I go where they need me. Mm -hmm. I have a main small masha, masha al Sahaba that I go to. That's my Juma masha where I yeah. go to, but I just try to help uh, other brothers learn about mm -hmm. Islam. Um, there's a big uh, community in Dallas, Fort Worth of Revert brothers who are all military. Mm -hmm. So we have our own little association of Muslim revert military guys who served mm -hmm. in the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, and stuff. We and get they've together. all accepted Islam. They've all accepted Islam. Oh, here you go. Some people are like, man, oh, these guys, they're former and they're trying to do uh, <laughs> holy war and jihad. See, we got a lot more to talk about. You got, no. you got to put this in perspective. We'll be right back with more Hannah Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. If you haven't, subscribe right now. Back here on the Dean Show, my special guest coming from a background of Methodist ministers, and you ended up having an open mind, you had some problems with the whole concept of God being three in one, and the Trinity and other politics going on. You like the pure monotheism of Islam, of only worshiping the one who created Jesus, Moses, Abraham, the one creator, the one God, pure monotheism, and all the other things that uh, Islam revolves around. Islam simply meaning to submit to the Creator, not the creation. That's the same like in the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name, thy will be done. That's Islam. That's yeah. Uh, you mentioned there's uh, many other uh, people in the military. It's interesting, during the Gulf War, uh, you had almost over 3,000 uh, U.S. troops come to visit uh, their station there. Uh, no, actually, more than 3,000. How many was it in the Gulf War? Do you, do you know? Yeah. But 3,000 accepted Islam. Islam That's a, yes. 3,000 plus accepted Islam. Anyone with an open mind like yourself who comes in and really studies it, seeking the truth, they'll see that this is definitely, you know, what I'm looking for. Islam is simple. Military guys like simple things. We also like the discipline of Islam. Yeah. You give your five prayers, everything's laid out, and there's no equivocation in Islam. It's black and white, there's right and wrong, and it's very simple religion and easy to learn. But now they already, I said military, Islam, oh, militia. <laughs> it, it's not like that. I mean, I, I think it takes people with open minds and some people are followers, other people are leaders, you know. But if you have an open mind and you, and you actually study Islam with somebody with a person of knowledge, that you see the truth of Islam. These things are just so ridiculous. I just, I just hate, you know, because now we're on the defensive usually and um, that's why you have people who are usually the KKK type, uh, racist, hater, you know, people who, who actually have more in common with ISIS and they, these extreme people who are not even Muslim who have this hate rhetoric. You've seen people trying to blow up mosques. That'll take me to my next question because you do some consulting because of your experience. Tell us about this. Uh, here at, uh, in uh, Richardson at the uh, Islamic Association of North Texas, just uh, two weeks ago, we had a group called Bear. That's their name they got because they, they saw Care. They think Care is an unindicted co-conspirator from 9-11. They have all these conspiracy theories. And what they do is they go protest in front of the masjid with weapons, yeah. which to me, I think is a, a purely an intimidation tactic. Now, that being said, this is America, it's a gun culture, it's their Second Amendment right, which we have no problem with. But I think if you're trying to engage someone in a conversation, the way not to go is to show up at the masjid with guns. How about walking on the masjid and ask questions? One of the guys I debated with, uh, David Wright, I think is his name, he's a leader of Bear, and his whole thing was, I need to know what's going on in that masjid. 
Come on in. And but you won't come in. But we said, you know, if you want to know, it's a 501c. Their financial records are open. Go, instead of standing out here with your guns on the sidewalk, go inside and talk to their moms, talk to the people. Now, on several occasions when they've had smaller groups, when there's been not the group think mentality, but one or two people, people have come in. I won't say their minds have been changed, but they have a different view. It's like they think there's, you know, insurgent training going on in the masjid. Crazy, yeah. And when the only thing that goes on in the masjid is training for, for youth to be good people, for people to commit to do dawah, to be called to Islam. And, you know, the other masjid, uh, masjid al Islam downtown, they feed people every Saturday. They don't feed Muslims, they feed people. If you're hungry and you need something to eat, you go there. Mm -hmm. There's no distinction made. Because, yeah. you know, Muslims are here to serve people. Training the heart, the heart. Uh, purifying the heart, uh, trying to better ourselves each and every day to be better human beings and, and to actually be good neighbors. And you're not being actually, as uh, you know, the verse in the Bible where it talks about um, when one came to Jesus and said, Oh, good master, what good thing can I do that I may have eternal life? Meaning paradise. Jesus said, Why are you calling me good? There's only one good, and that's God. And by the way, that's the God that we worship, that Jesus is saying there's only one good, but that's God. And if one wants to enter eternal life, keep the commandments. One of the greatest commandments is to love your neighbor. So if many of these people um, who, who, who are brothers in humanity, the Christians, and many are stepping up and showing kindness. We've had letters from people that have written a different massage and said, we don't agree with those. Exactly, we need more of that. We need, you know, and we publish these letters out and they say things. But these people who come to the Messiah to protest, they have an agenda. Yes. And no matter what you tell them, it's not gonna change their mind because they have the be all, end all piece of knowledge that there has to be something going on in there. All you have to be bad because one of you's bad. And this guy even said this, he said, we don't want any Syrian refugees here because one of them might do something. So you're going to condemn a whole group of people who are escaping the same oppression and terror that Americans don't want and exclude them from the place that says, give me your tired, give me your poor, give me your huddled masses on the off chance that one of them might do something. And you know, my response was, so should we exclude all white males from movie theaters <laughs> yeah. and my brother said well that's different because you know there's lone shooters and there's a crazy guy and I said well if you flip it around Muslims think the same thing those people are un un indicative of you know Muslims they're the thing so you can't say because one guy committed an act in San Bernardino that now 1.6 billion Muslims are all guilty because of this one guy one guy and you forgot about the 355 356 probably is more now mass uh, shootings that weren't Muslim. Correct. You forgot about that. They, they never bring those up. They don't bring that up. Yes. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's crazy. Uh, do you think we're almost out of time? Uh, you mentioned uh, your mother. Mm -hmm. uh, was it your mother or grandmother that uh, she actually was the first uh, woman? Yeah, she was the first black school teacher in an all white school district in East Texas. Yeah. Little town called uh, Gilmer, Texas. Yeah. Upshur School District. And uh, she, my, my mother's a, a, a good woman good Christian woman. A lot of my friends ask, how can you love your mother and be a Muslim? I go, because she's my mother. We all know the Hadith, right? Yes. Who should you love best? Your mother. Again, your mother, your mother and finally your father. And the, the question my mother asked me when I became a Muslim was, do I still believe in God? And I said, yes. And she was fine. We've never had an issue since. Yeah. And, and that's the same God that, that Jesus... Uh, that's the other problem, problem with the people and the guns. They say that our God is not the same God. They say he's the moon God and all those sort of yeah, things. That's, always that's rubbish. Really yeah. rubbish so. yeah. But, you know, I, I look at it like this. If God, God Allah says, don't worship the moon. Don't worship, the sun. don't worship anything in creation. Worship the one who created creation. And if my mother, who has, you know, like I say, one race in a church, still active in a church, can accept me being a Muslim and I can accept her being a Christian and we can get along, I don't, I don't see the issue. Yeah, haters are always going to hate. Uh, before we go, what I wanted to mention was you had at, at one point in history in time uh, very evil things happening to African Americans in this country. Uh, you had it happening to the Japanese, right? Uh, you think now we're, we're the scapegoats now? It's, uh, we are definitely the, the latest, I would say another term I want to use on your show, but we're definitely the scapegoats now. And the pawns, the pawns now that for, well, uh, for a gen... Islamophobia is an industry. Industry. It's yeah. a billion dollar business mm -hmm. and it's 
sowing lies, hate, deceit to make money for people. And you know, it's like, you know, I've been, you've been the American public has been bamboozled. Yeah. They've been hoodwinked, the wolves have been pulled over their eyes. So what would you, before we gotta conclude, but tell us for the person out there who's tuned in now, that they've been led to the Dean Show and maybe they have all of this brainwashing that's happened, they think in terrorism, this, all this nonsense, you had an open mind, Baptist, uh, Methodist minister, and you accepted Islam, uh, what would you uh, say to this person? To the I'd say get to know your Muslim neighbors as a person, not as a Muslim, just as a person. Talk about your kids, your school, your work, then work up to the questions about how is your religion like mine? How is yours different than mine? And you'll find that Islam and Christianity are more alike than different beside the, the one thing we know with Tawheed and, and, and the Trinity. But, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, give them a chance before you condemn them. And then go forth from that as human beings. We're going to end with the greeting of Jesus. Peace be with you. We started with peace. We end with peace. Thank you. It was a uh, pleasure meeting you and talking with you. Dear brother. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum to And thank you for tuning in and subscribe if you haven't already. Peace. That's what it's about, having peace with your creator, the one that Jesus called humanity at his time, people to have peace with. And then you got peace within yourself. And when you have peace within yourself, you can have peace with your neighbors in society. But most people who spew this hate, they don't have that peace, A, with the creator, and then they don't have it in themselves. So they're spewing hate. So work on the heart. That's what needs to be worked on. Because when you truly have this peace, you're not talking about hurting nobody. You're not talking about doing some of the crazy things that many of these people are doing. Trying to blow up Muslims, blowing up uh, mosques, and doing all this harm to their neighbor. No, this is not what Jesus taught, nor Muhammad, nor any of the messenger. And surely this is not what the Creator wants you to do. So go ahead and get to know your Muslim neighbor. Call us if you have any questions. 1-800-662-ISLAM and help to make not only need the world a better place, but your neighborhoods, your communities, but not spewing hate, but trying to develop understanding so we can go ahead and live on a footing of love, peace, and happiness. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. If you haven't, subscribe right now.